Welcome to Age Friendly Cleveland. My name is Mary McNamara, and I'm the director of the Cleveland Department of Aging. Across our country, we have what we call an aging network of services because no one division of government, agency, hospital system, or faith-based group provides all the services an older adult might need to age successfully. As examples, some older adults may need transportation or in-home health care, modifications to the home, or resources for staying engaged after retirement. It is our hope with this Age Friendly Cleveland series that you might learn more about the resources right here in Cleveland. This next segment is about one of the trusted agencies we work closely with every day to make Cleveland an age-friendly city. Welcome to Age Friendly Cleveland, I'm Dan Monroe. For over 46 years, the Greater Cleveland Volunteers have been helping people like you realize their, their dreams of volunteering and giving back to the community. Joining me now is Joy Banish, Executive Director of the Greater Cleveland Volunteers, and Kathy Coleman, who volunteers with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Ladies, welcome. So tell me, how does volunteering help the community? Volunteers help in a variety of ways. Um, every nonprofit organization needs volunteers to help them. Volunteers can do direct service working with clients of an organization. They can also help with administrative tasks. They can help with special events or special projects. They can also serve on boards or committees. So every nonprofit utilizes volunteers in a variety of different ways and they're a critical part of each organization. Now I've often heard that, that in volunteering it, there are some health benefits that come with volunteering. I guess it's good for your body, good for your soul. What do you think of that? That's very true. There's been a lot of research done over the last few years about that. Everyone knows that volunteering helps the community and helps the people that you're working with, but the research recently has been showing that volunteering also benefits the volunteer themselves, both physically and mentally. And a lot of the studies have shown that people that volunteer regularly are much healthier, they use less prescriptions, they have less depression, and one of the studies even showed that people who volunteer regularly, at least 100 hours a year, live longer than people who don't volunteer. So there's a lot of benefits to the volunteer as well. Get volunteering, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so as you said, the Greater Cleveland Volunteers, they connect people now 18 and over with opportunities. Are these one-shot deals or are these ongoing volunteer opportunities? Well, we actually have both. So a lot of organizations uh, co contact us when they need help with a special event or a project. And so we have what we call done in a day opportunities. People can sign up for those whenever their schedule permits or anything that's of interest to them and pop in and out of different opportunities throughout the year. We also recruit volunteers for ongoing or regular assignments at the nonprofits that we partner with. And every nonprofit has a need for a regular volunteer to work on a particular project or um, some activity. Most times it's during the weekdays, but we do have some opportunities in the evenings and also on the weekends. So it's really up to the volunteer. Whatever they want to do, we have something that will fit what they're interested in. So what are some examples of some recent one-day opportunities you people have volunteered for? Well, we do a lot in the summertime with the fresh produce distribution through a lot of the community organizations and hunger centers, and they need volunteers, you know, to stand there and hand out the food to people and, you know, take record of who received the food. We do a lot, as I mentioned, a lot of special events. Every organization has fundraisers that they need help with. Um, we help sometimes with community-wide events like conventions or big, you know, events going on in the community. Um, there's also a lot of projects that people can help with, just a one-time project like a helping with the mailing or making phone calls or something like that at, at a nonprofit. And what about multi-ongoing uh, 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 volunteerism? Kind of well, examples? we have a lot of those different types of opportunities. Um, our volunteers are helping with tutoring and mentoring both youth and adults. 
We are working with a lot of the meal programs, whether it be hunger centers or food banks. We have a lot of volunteers helping with Meals on Wheels. They are actually preparing the meals and then delivering them to clients every day throughout the week. We uh, work with the school districts. We work with a lot of nonprofits that um, are working to improve health or help people with health conditions. We have uh, volunteers helping with the homeless population and people victims of domestic violence. There's just a wide variety of things and basically the opportunities are there and whenever the volunteer is available if they want to set a set schedule weekdays or you know once in a while or evenings weekends we can make that match for them and they make an ongoing commitment to that organization. Well, How can someone find out about those opportunities? Well, probably the best way is just to look at our website. It's greaterclevelandvolunteers.org. And on the website, we have um, a schedule of the upcoming one-time opportunities people can sign up for right there on the website. We also have a database that you can search for opportunities based on your location or your availability or what you're interested in doing. And it'll give you examples of different volunteer opportunities that would work for you. And then um, a website to get connected. Now you mentioned you work with many different organizations to, mm -hmm. for volunteer, uh, especially uh, I understand you said the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. I understand mm -hmm. you have a special relationship with them. Tell me about that. We do. We've been providing volunteers to the Cleveland schools for more than 40 years and we provide volunteers to a wide variety of schools to help with all sorts of different activities, whatever the principal needs help with. Um, but for the last 22 years, we've been running a, a special program called the AARP Foundation Experience Corps Program, and it's a literacy tutoring program. And through this, we're providing volunteers that make an ongoing commitment to tutor children in kindergarten through third grade throughout the entire school year. And through that program, that brings us to Kathy. Yes. You actually tutor. Correct. Uh, tell me about that. What, what do you tutor at? I tutor at Wade Park Elementary School, and I've been doing it now for three years. What kind of work do you do with the kids? Okay, the kids, this, the, it's, it's, um, the program is to help the kids improve in their reading skills and build their confidence in reading. And we have a little band. What we do, we start, we start with sight words, the easy words. Well, I won't say easy, easy for us, but maybe a little complicated for them. So we go over the sight words. Well, for example, the, they, am, I. And once they recognize the sight, I'm, I'm um, right now. I'm with the second grade. So once, once they recognize their sight words, then we start. Um, with them with their level books and uh, in reading and we have a band that we wear and with the band it starts with echo and echo I read and then the child reads after me next is coral where we read together then the next is switch where we switch off mm -hmm. and the other is um, where we talk about what we read and then afterwards we read aloud together so they enjoy that, and it feels good just to see them once they recognize the words and um, they become familiar and know their words, they feel confident, I'm happy, and they show more confidence in their reading, reading ability. And uh, according to s statistics, it says that Cleveland Schools has improved on an average of almost one grade. So we've come a long way. Uh, it sounds and, like and you're making an incredible students. impact. Yes. That's just And amazing. I really enjoy it. Do you? Yes. Why did you decide to become a tutor? I wanted to I wanted to give back to the community and I also wanted to um, to help the children. The children that were had difficulty in reading. I wanted to see them grow. So once um, you know as as you see them learn the words and, and gain that confidence they say, I could do this. So at the end of the day, when I finished, I says, well, how do you think you did? I did awesome. Mm -hmm. So I have a sticker, you are awesome. And so they walk away very proud. And they come back and say, thank you. How and that's, that you and that's very day. gratifying for them to say thank you. Instead of, my last name is Coleman. Mm -hmm. So and for them, they may, I, I shorten it to Mrs. C. They'll say, thank you, Mrs. C. 
So when we, when we meet, good morning, Dan. Good morning, Mrs. Good C. Good morning, Mrs. C. Right. And what are we going to do today? How many pages are we going to read today? Well, let's read three pages and see how far we get today. So they'll say, one, one, one young man says, I don't think I want to read three pages a day. Okay, let's do two. And they get through the book. We're reading a book on animals. What's your favorite animal? A snow leopard. So he tells me, well, tell me about the snow leopard. So we read about the snow leopard. What do you like about the snow leopard? He lives in cold weather. You know, so they give their responses. So they're, they're learning and I'm, I'm learning with them. So it's very, it's like I said, it's very gratifying just to see them grow. Before you became a tutor, you said you retired. Mm -hmm. what, what did you do before? Were you a teacher at all or? And I worked for the state. For the state? Mm -hmm. Uh, workers' comp. <laughs> so that kind of ties into this, Joy. If uh, someone's looking to be a tutor uh, for CMSC, they don't have to have any educational background? No, the only requirements for this program is that they be age 50 and older because it is a program of AARP mm -hmm. and um, that they have at least a high school diploma or a GED. And we provide all the training to the volunteers before they start. And then throughout the, the year, we have ongoing training and building on what they've learned at the beginning of the year and then throughout the year. The program is a national program through AARP Foundation, and they have um, a curriculum, so to speak, that we're following. It's called Reading A to Z, and so it guides the students right. through different levels of books, and as they learn more, they progress through the different levels. It also comes with um, different materials that they, the volunteers can work on with the students. You probably recommend this to your friends or anyone watching. Uh, yes. It sounds like a lot of fun. It is. You know, and just to connect with the young folk too. Right. It's just, it's just something and it makes you feel that. young too. <laughs> well, that's always good. Joy, if people are interested in finding out about your different volunteer opportunities, we talked about your website. Give that out again, please. It's greatercleavenvolunteers.org. Do you have also social media presence or? We we do. We have. Um, a very active Facebook page as well as Twitter and we post volunteer opportunities on there every day sometimes multiple times every day and we also have a phone number if someone wants to call and talk to one of our volunteer coordinators they're very available um, they can even meet with somebody if they'd rather do a face-to-face -face discussion about the interests of the volunteer so people can contact us a variety of ways our phone number is 216-391-9500 Winter, spring, summer, fall, there's always something. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're also part of what I heard is the, uh, the Encore Cleveland Initiative. Right. Tell me about that. So Encore is actually a national initiative to um, take people age 50 and over and have them give back to the nonprofit sector. And many people that are involved across the country are retired from the public sector or the corporate world, and they're being encouraged to give back to the nonprofit sector through a wide variety of ways. So the Cleveland Foundation created Encore Cleveland in 2014, and this is in an effort to engage people in Cleveland in giving back to help through the nonprofit sector. And um, right now there's 11 different organizations that are grantees of the foundation and we're all a part of this effort. And it's a wide variety of different ways to get engaged. It ranges from volunteerism, which is what our role is, to part-time employment, full-time employment, there's fellowship opportunities, there's consulting opportunities, there's entrepreneurship classes. So it's a, a wide range of ways that people, if they want to get starting a new career or get engaged in helping in the second half of their life, they can be part of Encore. And they can learn all about that on your website too? Sure. We have a separate page on our website. The Cleveland Foundation also has a separate page for Encore. All right. Well, let's talk, you know, this has just been fantastic. So I, I, I believe it's really good to share what you have and get out there and volunteer. So, Joy, what you do with Greater Cleveland Volunteers is just great, and especially for our senior population, too. Yeah. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank we you. learned so much. Um, good luck to the Greater thank Cleveland you. Volunteers, and let's just all sign up, and let's just volunteer, and just give back a little bit of time. That's all you can do. Just, just give back a little bit of time, and it'll make you feel so much better. Thanks for watching Age Friendly Cleveland. I'm Dan Monroe. We'll see you next time.